have you ever regretted saving something? Those moving boxes I said would keep if we flattened and stored them under the bed and behind the doors lasted through the heat and came in handy in the winter when you left your records and your bills but needed something sturdy in which to carry your knitted hats and gloves, your loose stitched homemade scarves, things that take up lots of space with lots of air. When I got back to the coast where we left most everything else I erased all your notes from the margins of Allen Ginsberg's collected poems, 1947 to 1980, that weighty red book we all find on our shelves, but no one wants. <laughs> <laughs> and here I had two. <laughs> In your light pencil lead, you posed rhetorical questions I knew the answers to. <laughs> now a stack of yearbooks from a school I didn't attend. Now a package you long ago marked audio tapes shipped to Chicago. But mixtapes are cheaper than blank tapes, so I slid them back under the bed to wait. You used to write poems about me and then refer to them in conversation. There's that graceful lack of grace I'm talking about when I spit my gum out or dropped an earring. This poem, I guess, is one of those things. <coughs> what you want to know about last night. Then I complimented him on his tie. Not something you could wear, of course. Not brown, slim, or striped. Not well-matched with pink button-ups or black undershirts, Dickies, Converse, belt buckles. But fitting on a man who wears one every day with a briefcase, slips of paper, etc. When he ducked out of it and gave it to me, I tried not to accept it, but he said, take it. To be honest, it's a B-rate tie on me. You'll wear it well, as though I would wear it. I could not help looking at the looseness of his neck where it met his chest, the contrast to the white of his collar. Could not help wondering what his wife. You, though, you couldn't pull it off. Too young, and it would seem like you did it all the time. 